Hello, Mrs H here. This is part one of the walkthrough for AQA paper one, 2019. Question one, figure one shows an animal cell viewed under a microscope. The cell contains a nucleus. What is the function of the nucleus? One mark. So this controls the activities of the cell. You only need to write one thing, but there are other possible answers such as contains genetic information, DNA, genes, chromosomes. Name one type of cell that does not contain a nucleus, a prokaryotic cell or a bacterium. Remember, just write one answer. A bacterium is a prokaryotic cell, so that is one answer, but... Another possible answer could be a red blood cell. Draw a simple diagram of the cell in figure one, labelled two parts of the cell. So look at the cell in figure one. It is an animal cell and you can tell it's an animal cell because it doesn't have a cell wall. It doesn't have a rigid or regular shape. So make sure you don't add a cell wall to your diagram. Just keep your drawing nice and simple a cell surface membrane around the outside, a nucleus, and there are some other structures too, but the resolution of the image isn't very good, so I'm just gonna draw some dots. Then we need to label two parts, so I'm gonna stick with the two parts I definitely know, the cell membrane and the nucleus. Of course, you could also label the cytoplasm. Name one structure found in a plant cell, but not found in an animal cell, cell wall. That's one mark. Remember to just write one, but you may have chosen to write chloroplast or permanent vacuole. Figure two shows some different cells. The real length from point X to Y is 0.06 millimeters. Calculate the magnification and use the equation. This is nice of them to give us the equation. They don't always give it to us. So the real size is 0.06 millimeters as it tells us this in the question. So we need to measure with a ruler the size of the image between point X and Y. You do need to be aware that when you practice these kinds of questions, your printer at home might print this image out at a slightly different size to the original paper. When I measure mine, between X and Y, it measures 24 millimeters, but yours might be slightly different. So just follow the method through with your numbers and don't worry if your answer is slightly different. On the day, the exam board will issue you all with the same sized images. So 24 millimeters divided by 0.06 millimeters equals 400, and that is the answer. Notice that the units must be the same. You can't divide centimetres by millimetres, for example. So always check. The cells shown in figure two were viewed using a light microscope. Give two advantages of using an electron microscope instead of a light microscope. Nice and simple answer. Electron microscope has a higher magnification and a higher resolution. Question two, mosquitoes carry a pathogen that causes malaria. What type of pathogen causes malaria? A bacterium, a fungus, a protist, yep. Mosquito nets can help prevent the spread of malaria. Table one shows the results of a study in one area of Africa. A newspaper made the following statement, Study shows mosquito nets are scientifically proven to prevent malaria. Give one piece of evidence that supports the statement. Well, there is a lower percentage of people with malaria when using mosquito nets. So we can see that 1.2%. Or you might write, which is the same thing really, uh, there is a higher percentage of people with malaria if they don't use mosquito nets. So just one reason why the statement may not be valid. If we look back at the table, 1.2% people still get malaria, even if they use the mosquito nets. There is a list of other answers the example accepted, such as the data was only from one part of Africa, only a small group size was used. There were uneven group sizes with nets versus no nets. Even the people may have lied about using mosquito nets. I think the answer we have written is probably the most obvious choice. 
Predict the number of people per 100,000 who died from malaria in 2017 if the trend stayed the same. Notice the number of deaths are shown over a two year period. So from 2011 to 2013, there is a decrease in three deaths from 97 per 100,000 to 94 per 100,000. Then a difference of 2 per 100,000 from 2013 to 2015. If we follow the pattern and say a difference of 1 per 100,000 from 2015 to 2017, that will give us 91 per 100,000. And the exam board will actually accept any number between 88 and 91. Use of mosquito nets has helped to reduce the number of deaths from malaria each year. Suggest one other reason for the reduced number of deaths from malaria each year. Well, it could be because of improved healthcare, such as vaccinations. Other answers you might give, perhaps a better use of mosquito control methods, such as spraying insecticides, preventing mosquitoes from breeding, or changing behaviour to prevent being bitten, such as not going out in the evening or wearing long clothing. Describe how the human body prevents pathogens from entering and defends itself against pathogens inside the body. So we need to think about the prevention, such as the skin, the stomach acid, the eyes and the cilia. And then once the pathogens got inside or if the pathogens got inside, then we've got our backup plan. We've got our white blood cells, which are our phagocytes and lymphocytes. So skin acts as a barrier preventing entry of pathogens. The oil on the skin is an extra barrier. And if the skin is damaged, then scabs will form a temporary barrier until the skin heals. The stomach that contains hydrochloric acid, which will kill any pathogens that are swallowed in food, drink or mucus. The trachea and the bronchi are lined with mucus, which traps pathogens. And then the cilia that are also lining the trachea and bronchi waft the mucus with the trapped pathogens up the airways and to the back of the throat. And this mucus is then swallowed and then the stomach acid can kill the pathogens. This prevents pathogens from entering the lungs. So it's really important that our cilia are working. The eyes are lined with moisture, which contains enzymes that kill bacteria. If the pathogens get past these first lines of defense, then white blood cells called phagocytes can engulf the pathogen and destroy it using enzymes and this is called phagocytosis. Lymphocytes, B plasma cells, produce antibodies that can attach to pathogens and attract phagocytes or antibodies can neutralize the pathogens by acting as antitoxins or binding to viruses to prevent them from entering a cell. And finally, you might want to mention that there are memory cells which are made and will give a rapid response should the same pathogen enter again. I haven't used my space as well as you will. Obviously, you don't have to draw diagrams. They are just to remind you of the process. I hope you found that useful. Have a break and then give part two a go. And don't forget to like and subscribe for new content.